It's all coming back. It's all coming back to me now. There were moments of gold and there were flashes of light. There was nights when things were so cold. There was nights of endless pleasure. <laughs> it was more than any ray allowed. You know Brenda, Brenda. <laughs> Or Deborah. Sorry, that's just your name. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> you know what voice I've been trying to Cold do? Cold open right there. I've been trying to figure out. Well, only really in the... I don't know why. It's only over in the mornings when I'm like taking my morning shower. Okay. But it's the uh, the Jimmy Neutron best friend voice. Oh, the best friend who yeah. talks like this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, Jimmy. <laughs> Is it because you see that guy on TikTok yes. that reads his like girlfriend's erotica so in like cartoon funny. voices? Yeah. He grabbed his swollen member yes. and even like <laughs> 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 Welcome residents to the Dr. DC's podcast. Yep, good. Dr. Look, just, DC's just podcast. Just read the script. I know, but sometimes I feel like I'm... It's year eight. Why <laughs> try... <laughs> I mean, God, isn't that the fucking uh, key message for your marriage? That, there's actually no more like to that sentence. Just, it's year eight. Why, why try? try? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, this is why I hope we renew our vows, Brenda. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah. It's Or year... should I say, any Ray? Whoa. That's pretty great, Ray. <laughs> We're going to do this episode as Ray and this brother, whose name I don't remember, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. Can't even remember my name. Hi, Ray. Hi, Ray. Uh, first question comes from Instagram. <laughs> wow. Just straight to it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking right in. Uh, there's a bunch of shit that's happening right now that I don't know if we'll ever get to talk about. <laughs> Yeah, do you want to just... Israel, past. <laughs> yeah. Listen, <laughs> now is the Kamala time. Kamala Harris, Donald Trump. There's issues that you expect from us to talk about, and I don't know if we'll get a chance. Yeah, Supreme, is Supreme, coming up. Supreme Court term limits. <laughs> yeah. These are these could have been great doubles. But Eekist. <laughs> but Eekist. It has the, to come The Eekist to end all Eekists. I mean, truly, it is the season. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, certainly the most expensive Eekist. I mean, yeah. Fuck yeah. No, there's a bunch of like nerd shit happening. Important things. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I do think it's important to take a little bit of time. Yeah. Here to, I mean, A, take it was just, out for our homies. It was just uh, Comic Con. Yeah. And so a bunch of announcements happened. And, and first of all, I just want to say the DC stuff, while not like a ton, was good. Yeah. The comic stuff looks interesting and fun. Like, uh, there was a trailer drop for Creature Commandos. I haven't even seen that yet. That looks fun. So Creature Commandos animated, but clearly follows up on plot developments from Peacemaker Season 1, from The Suicide Squad, th like stuff that's Fuck technically yeah. not canon, but sure. in the way that things are ever not canon, yeah, where it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, we just won't talk about it too much. Yes. But, um, but it like, looks good, you know? like So the Creature com like basically Waller can't use humans for Task Force X anymore, so she's got... Frankenstein and GI Robot, yeah. Doctor Phosphorus and the Weasel and shit on this team with Rick Flag Senior, so good. Played by Frank Grillo, of course. Um, but but yeah, it's it, it's. But we got the it's bullet, baby. It, it, but it's the bullet is back for the official DC Studios logo. I love. They, they were like, this podcast is doing too well. Yeah. We need to really. We need to like. We need to like drift in their wake a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It had nothing to do with like a time of DC when they were doing great, but more about or this also podcast. just like the most beloved logo. Of, no, no, no. It's about this brand. podcast. No, the DC Bullet logo being the one for DC Studios is great. Love that. Yeah, Creature Commandos looks fun. I think the the um, fuck. What's it called? Is it the is it the Absolute Line or? They're they're starting essentially almost like an ultimate universe for DC. Oh, sure. Um, except for good. Except good. Like, and it <laughs> does have a like. Someone else online pointed this out. It has very New Fifty Two vibes. But what they're doing is letting the main comics still come out, and they're just sure. also doing this over here. So yeah, I, I don't know. I I I think the DC stuff was like fun and good, and I was into it. And 
you know, Kite Man, hell yeah, is still coming out. Totally. You know, like there's there's shit to be excited about. That was great. But also, they're not rushing into it. They're they're not planning a fucking phase. We're not rushing with twelve movies. There's not like a there's not a fucking trailer or anything for Superman. There's like I'm happy. It's it's how I want them to move forward. It's which great. Is like uh, uh, outside of everything else, everybody else is doing, yep. and just like what's working. Just for them. do your thing. 100%. So all of that, very happy with yeah. Marvel. On the other hand, Marvel. Um, should we just talk about the big one, the Fantastic Four? Well, so first of all, saw some footage of Fantastic Four. Yeah, which I we already knew it was being set in the sixties, and that, I, wa- I saw it too. Now some of the footage, like the like the sort of the mat, like the newlywed game, yeah, thing, or like the dating game set up, like. I'm actually like really interested in how they m- play with the era. Yes. I mean, I think there's already sort of a a proven case study in that with WandaVision, totally. like doing a sort of like playing on the tropes of an era of TV kind of and thing. sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. So, but no, I mean, Fast- Fantastic Four, I'm interested in. First look at Galactus. Yeah. It's not just a big fart cloud. No. So, you know, we're, we're doing it. We're getting there fucking so rad that's pretty cool that's neat um i guess the first trailer for uh, brave new world has been out for a bit the the captain america movie oh i haven't even oh i did see that yeah yeah no i did see that i'm actually relatively interested in it, that it, like it, considering that i've like I t- i'm so behind on marvel shows and shit i still haven't seen fucking wakanda forever like i'm really behind on shit i'm like I want to see Captain America. I don't particularly like Anthony Mackie in general, but this does look good. I'm interested in it. And, you know, like a, just a little tease of Red Hulk and yeah, shit. So, yeah, like, yeah. that's kind of cool. That's that's neat. Um, They showed some stuff for Thunderbolts, but I haven't seen it yet. I kind of chose not to because I was like, the last time they did another group thing, I, I really hated it. And so sure. I was like, I don't want another internal, so I'm just sort of not looking at it. Also, Thunderbolts is kind of a terrible name, so... Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. So, at, at any rate, that one I'm still vaguely interested in, though, too. You know, it's going to have Winter Soldier and yeah. Red Guardian and Yelena and uh, Ghost from Ant-Man and the Wasp. Sure, yeah, yeah. And shit like that. So, I'm, I'm sort of into that, but I haven't seen anything yet. But I think we got to talk about this weekend. The, the big thing was, obviously, Kang's out. <laughs> yeah. Let's sort of pretend that we didn't do that uh dr doom is in yeah the avengers movie that was being called kang dynasty is now being called doomsday yes and they <sighs> an- they announced uh who's playing dr doom and it's robert downey jr i just i i think a few things could happen here yeah i mean one in the context of the MCU, just the way that they built their universe, I can see... I can see how. I can see how they yeah, would do this. Totally. And I think it's... It makes sense enough. Fine. Yeah. I just don't think I want it. I think that's my problem. And I think even if it's not... Whether it's a multiverse thing yeah, or yeah, a yeah. timeline thing or a whatever, I kind of feel like... All of the excitement that I had for Deadpool and Wolverine and even for Captain America and like this shit where I'm like, I'm actually kind of getting excited about these movies again. That announcement really felt to me like we don't know what to do. This is this is what it is. It feels like they even if it's learned. a misdirect and he's just a, a doom and then the real doom. cut, Like, you know what I mean? Sure. Or there's dooms of the multiverse and he's just one of them. Even if it's a misdirect. This whole the move, the whole announcement and the move, I was like, oh my god, they they, they actually learned. don't know what to do. Yeah, and then it sort of actually retroactively made me go like, oh fuck, was Deadpool and Wolverine a mistake? This is because I, you know, like because I was like, Deadpool and Wolverine looks like a ton of fun. We saw it. I had a good time. I, I, it's I've got my thoughts on it. I'm still parsing through them. Me and Polter will talk about it. We'll do a Cerebros. But, like, I, in general, really enjoyed it, and I thought it was fun, and I thought it was a nice little love letter to that Fox that, that that X-Men franchise and stuff yeah, yeah. like that. 
and they cracked a joke. It's even in one of like the trailers of that of like they're Disney's gonna make him do this till he's ninety. And then they brought RDJ out as Doom, and I was like, "Fuck, they're gonna make Hugh Jackman do this till he's 90. Yeah, yeah. They and joked I kind about of, it, and I kind of like my my whole thought was like, "Oh no!" Like they actually don't get it. There's like they have nowhere to go. The only thing they could do to like juice the numbers is bring RDJ back, like. And just bring back all of the people because they were like, okay, we clearly don't know what made this good. So let's just bring them all back. And so it's like you're getting all of the people back. My big problem with it is that it was an announcement. Yeah. Like, I think I'd actually be like, oh, that's kind of compelling. It was in the movie. If you just like showed up to the movie and then it is there. Dude's kind of mask agree. comes off and it's like Tony, but he's all burnt up from yeah, the Infinity Stones yeah, and yeah, shit. And you're like, yeah. oh, fuck. Like, I would be like, that's not quite the doom I wanted, but I'd be like, interesting move, movie. Like, Marvel, the MCU has a history of doing those kind of misdirect kind of things with villains. Like, then I'd be like, okay, let them cook. But to be like, everybody calm down. We know the Kang thing was a disaster, but we brought Robert back. Yeah, truly, kind that's feels what it like, feels like. <laughs> it feels like really desperate. Like, also... Why? I don't know if that's cynical of me, but I was like not... I was kind of like, oh, no. Also, for me, it's like, that's the whole fucking Fantastic Four thing, which is like, I thought in... I mean, here's also the problem, which is There's like... There's probably a different Doom. He's probably just a... This is probably also... Because uh, here's whatever. the problem. It's like... I'm like, it's a multiverse. So is it a mid-century or like, is it the fifties or is it the modern day in the, I, I had a thought that they, it would actually be the sixties, but then whatever happens with Galactus, they get like removed from the timeline and they write it off with that comment. Dr. Strange made in multiverse Shh. of madness where he goes like fantastic four. Didn't you chart in the sixties? Sure. Where it's like, they were known. Then they've sort of been forgotten. Yeah. And then they pop back into the present. Yeah. Like, Marvel does that shit all the time. Wouldn't be surprised. Cause I would much rather they'll it, figure it out. Cause I would much but... rather it be like, if you're going to use a fucking Stark, why don't you use the Stark from the sixties? Oh, you sure? Yeah, like and make it his well, dad. Well, I don't even know that Doom is in that movie. It might just be the Fantastic Four. I know, Four but it's like, that's and... the whole like I don't know. And I, I think for me, at the end of the day, the big problem I'm having with this whole thing is it feels like they're like, oh, we don't know how to make, we don't know how to redo what we did in the early 2000s. I say this, and you know, listen, this is year eight of a DC podcast, <laughs> and I say this with all love in my heart. But it felt like a real DC fucking move <laughs> to be like, did this work? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I kind of felt like Marvel's DCing itself. It's so funny because now, like, it, it was so funny explaining this to my girlfriend who we went to right. the movie with. Yeah, we we saw Deadpool and Wolverine. Yeah, and my and my girlfriend who will occasionally bomb in for these movies sure. almost never and has no idea what they're about. Like she, and it's just there to watch a movie. We've also been together now for like over a year. She still doesn't really know what the difference between Marvel and DC is. And is constantly being like, I've been meaning to talk to you. About <laughs> <something, but>, um... <laughs> the amount of time she's just like, is Superman Marvel? Like she just like, has really no idea. She was popular in high school. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I could tell. Yeah. <laughs> she, uh, and it was so funny because she, we walk out of there and she was like, I was like, well, what did you think? And she was like, it was good, but I'm confused. And I was like, fair. I'm confused. Yeah. Uh, I was like, and I've caught up more than even Reed has. Like, I've watched almost everything. Oh, I wasn't that confused by it. Uh, but but that's also because I am fresh off an X-Men rewatch. Sure. I couldn't have more context for the, for Deadpool and Wolverine than I have right now. Except for watching, but you have low-key seasons. I I've seen the, that first season. Oh, but you haven't seen the second. No. Oh my god, that's yeah. This is what I mean, though. Like, but I didn't feel like I needed it because they really brought in all the characters from sure. Loki, uh, and it it's funny because yeah, I was trying to explain it to her, and she was just like so confused. And I was like, "What's funny is they're just doing comics." And she was like, "What do you mean?" And I was like, it, "Yeah." I'm like, "This is." The oldest tale. This is like an average Tuesday in a comic book. I'm like, this is all of the same problems, which is because she's like, why don't they just reset it? And I was like, ha, 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 ha. oh, they'll no, try. No. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, they'll you try. Can't, you can't hard reset. <laughs> yeah. I was like, <laughs> I mean, they will try. It'll just bounce back. They'll, they'll, they'll try because they've 
they haven't learned any of the comic book lessons. But uh, it's it's so funny because I was trying to explain it all to her, and I'm like, well, this from this thing, and and, th- and that was from this, and, and I was like, they couldn't because she was just like like trying to understand the X Men wolf. Like, well, and then there's also the meta thing of like who owned which rights, which characters go where, what is, what's happening. And I was like- trying to explain that to her, and I was like, it makes it more challenging because I'm like, they they basically painted themselves in this corner, and I was like, the big problem for me is the multiverse of it all, which is the fact that they have been fucking like edging us on multiverse yeah. for so long that we don't even realize we're so deep in multiverse now because we're still waiting for the reveal. But what I kind of, I mean, listen, I don't want to spoil anything from Deadpool and Wolverine, but what I kind of liked about that movie is that the movie, the movie's message was sort of like, we're done here, right? Yes. Like, like the, I, which I don't know if that totally lines up on the Jonathan Majors timeline of it all, but there is something fundamentally funny about like this thing that we've been building towards. And then this movie comes out that's like, I think, I think we've just about got everything we can out of this. And then the, like the announcement that it's like, well, it's Dr. Doom, not Kang. Like it is sort of, it would be a mistake to say perfect. Cause that implies design, but, but it's like so comics, but it's so comics. It's like, 5G's coming. Truly, like, it is such actually just future state. It's so fucking comics. <laughs> and and what's funny to me is like they're now going yeah. like let's just pretend the multiverse doesn't exist and like it does but we'll like there's slowly... It does but we're not really going to look at. But they like it, it for cuz for the last 3 years we've been sort of promised the reveal of the multiverse and it's going to explode and up we're going to have all these characters and they kind of fucked it up so much for the that like this Deadpool Wolverine movie kind of was the the thing from a movie standpoint. I, I mean, but this is what I mean. You and, know, and, like, they're, and they're just sort of like, yeah, yeah, it exists. It was it sort of happened on the show that uh, the big fans love and watch, but it, it just sort of exists now. Because like, I, I, I remember halfway through the movie, all of the TVA stuff existed. And I remember looking at my girlfriend and being like, oh, she has no fucking clue. Like the last right. that she remembers, there wasn't a multiverse. Like, right. The last, she probably maybe watched one of the last two Avengers movies. Right. Sure. I was yeah, like, yeah. she doesn't realize there's a multiverse now. And I'm like, that's the average fan. Yeah. As much as like, I think again, as much as like comic book fans would love to believe that every comic book reader knows about all of the. Sure. It's like at the end of the day, it's like, no, they bombed in for some uh, action comic stuff. And then now suddenly they're the only flip side to that, that I would say is that at least Dr. Strange. Mm -hmm. So big tentpole movie also did multiverse. So you didn't have to necessarily have watched the shows to know we was were doing TVA in that though. No, but well, we were but we thing. were doing parallel Earth shit at least. Sure, but and then also just the idea of multiverse has even like invaded our indie movies. Oh no! Luckily, they don't have to explain the concept of multiverse, but the idea but yes. that there was some inciting thing that's kind of like yeah. eh, no, it just sort of like it exists totally, which is very funny. Yeah, but yeah, it it was it was a good time, and you guys will talk about it in more depth. But it 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 was a good time unfortunately I saw, I saw an article headline the other day and I sort of like scoffed at it and now I'm kind of like no you're kind of right which is like the multiverse ruined Marvel movies and I was kind of like well fuck off and then I'm like no I'm like that would have made this movie so much better <laughs> like I was like I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out there and someone's gonna come at me with some comic evidence of why sure. it's not true but I it's because Marvel though having a multiverse isn't built on multiverse sure dc is multiverse yeah it has been for since the 50s yeah it's built on it fucking the flash and a big piece of it is that the worlds are not just where copies of you live some of them are but like earth one and earth two your two big ones totally different worlds an era of superheroes existed on Earth too. They sort of played the with Justice this Society. In, the blah blah blah. Uh, uh, in in uh, the, the the multiverse of madness, like yeah, they kind of did that. Yes, there's but, a, but, but they've sort of abandoned that with the TVA thing. Yeah, yeah, you're right. There's an element of that, but I guess what I mean is, yeah, DC's got lots of Earths too, where it's like here's robot Batman or here's vampire yeah, Batman. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, we've yeah. got lots of that too, but. It also came from a place where it's like, no, these worlds like also like DC was buying other publishers. There's a world of quality comics. There's a yeah, world of Charlton yeah, yeah. comics. Like these worlds are just different yeah. worlds. And there's something more interesting about that than just 
all the copies and shit, which is why even when DC does multiverse stuff, I'm way less interested in seeing the Justice Riders, the Wild West Justice League, than I am in seeing the fucking Zoo Crew. Sure. You know, like, that's the shit I like. I'm sure Marvel's got something that's like that, but I guess what I'm saying is I feel like their version of multiverse doesn't have as isn't as foundationally yeah, built yeah, on this yeah. idea of like, no, these are, we've got like six different things here that we have to like make fit. Totally. You know, uh, it's yeah, it, it it's going to be a weird few years, but I've sort of like, I mean, and the Deadpool movie even makes a joke about it, which is like, you're coming in at sort of the, you're coming in at a, bit of a low point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which I love. Very funny. Uh, and is true. Yeah. And it, uh, it, it, go see the Deadpool movie just to watch them fucking rip to shreds. Mar, uh, Disney and Marvel and Fox for uh, and two hours. I, it, I, I think it's a legitimately fun movie. I think if you've even halfway been following Marvel stuff, you're fine. Totally, and you're gonna be confused by all of the fucking time travel, TVA, all that shit. It's fine, like, but it it, it kind of doesn't. It, matter. it doesn't really matter. And ultimately, I, and again, we'll go into it more on Cerebr- and there's a fucking on plot Cerebros, holes in it. And but like, I I think it's actually a really nice capstone to yes. the X Men franchise. I like, agree. it's a thing that it needed because it otherwise just ended on Dark Phoenix and New Mutants. Yeah. And you go, like, these two movies were going in no direction. And this movie does... I sort of spat in the face of those fucking original X-Men and movies. And this movie sort of puts a little bit of love back yes. into the end of that. Like, it's worth it if you liked any of the X-Men movies yeah. to go and watch this and go... Oh, yes. like there it kind it of is, is, you know, like, it was very much set up for you going into this movie. I yeah, mean, yeah, we, yeah. it was also like somewhat deliberate to yes. have been doing this, but that I also just forgot and was like, oh, man, I've been watching all the X-Men movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Did I do that on purpose? Yeah. Hmm. So at any rate. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what's going on. A lot's been happening. It's a bit of a fourth wall break. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Yeah. Do the, you like do you like what I've named the episode? It's uh, a great meme. Uh I, I I didn't. It's from Euphoria. I didn't it's look. Like, wait. Is this fucking episode about comics? Oh, is that a Instead of the, is this fucking play about us? Oh, is that a classic Euphoria meme on TikTok? Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. What I hope someone used that for Supernatural in the musical episode like as a meme. Well, they can't because Euphoria wasn't out back then. No, 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 I know. But like in hindsight, like... Oh, I see. I hope someone put that as a meme. Uh, Oh, I... Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm sure someone has. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The original because that's even more so perfect. Yeah, well, now we're talking about Ghost Facers. This is another fourth wall break. I I mean, this is... Oh, my God. This is what we're here for. To quote Deadpool from his first movie, a fourth wall break inside a fourth wall break, but that's 16 walls. (laughs) 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 It was a good movie. I I want I don't, I don't want to like Deadpool. It's because because the people who love Deadpool, yeah, you know, it's a creed. It's how I it's yeah. how I feel about Snyder movies. It's how yeah, I feel about yeah, a bunch yeah, of things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like I just don't want to like it. But but those movies are good. They're fun. They're good. You know, they are. They're good. Uh, fourth walls. Yeah, talking about like continuity uh you know manipulation and fourth wall breaks and uh like characters that have or or stories that have sort of meta implications your morrisons your uh <laughs> your i mean i mean a great example yeah, really yeah, yeah, truly yeah. um but i think there's lots of examples of it and in in a few different ways and again because i was in a sort of deadpooly mood of course i was like let's talk about this feels like the time yeah so let's start over on Instagram. Now we're going to Instagram. Take some questions and answer them. Oh my god! Them. Oh my god. Free, doing free jazz. I don't know what to do. Yeah, baby. There's no time signatures. Yeah, I'm breaking fourth fourth time wall. Whoa! Oh my god! Yeah, you baby. broke my musical hymen. <laughs> um, you broke my fourth wall. <laughs> uh, first question comes from. Oh, First question God. comes from Marsha <laughs> <laughs> You're Patrick Starr now. Yeah. <laughs> hey there, SpongeBob. First question comes from Marsha Crisis. Uh, the Flash. Oh, uh, SpongeBob, what did he write? The Flash. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, that's not bad. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, the first question. The fucking the look of disgust <laughs> from my wife. The Sorry. first question comes from Martian Crisis. <laughs> SpongeBob. <laughs> do you got another one? I can't do Plankton. I was but waiting if I, for But it. if I could, I would sing Pink Pony Girl. <laughs> 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 The Flash of Two Worlds has a metafictional reference in that the writer of the Jay Garrick comics that Barry Allen reads is referred to by name. It is said that the writer is picking up information from Earth 2 and putting it in his comics. Are there any other similar self-referential metafictional aspects? God, this is fucking this podcast. Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, baby. Uh, are there any other similar self-referential metafictional aspects in DC before Grant Morrison builds their entire career on that idea? Um, okay, so Flash of Two Worlds, Flash 123. It's the first time that Jay Garrick, the Golden Age Flash, and Barry Allen, the Silver Age Flash, team up. Yeah. But wind the clock back even further <laughs> showcase number four the first appearance of barry allen the start of the silver age of comics yeah uh in 1956 or whatever it, it is in that comic barry gets struck by lightning doused in chemicals and gains powers and then goes i should call myself the flash like those comics i used to read fucking crazy so, from the very, very start of the Silver Age, the multiverse, the idea... Well, they refined it into multiverse, but the idea of a sort of metafictional layer in the comics existed. Barry Allen read Jay Garrick Flash comics. Crazy. And so, when you get to Flash 123, Barry is, like, performing at a community center or something, and he's like... I mean, listen, I'm about to phrase this poorly, but he's like, I'm performing at this community center. Time to vibrate for these kids. And he fucking <laughs> accidentally pops into a different plane of existence and he ends up on Earth too. And, um, and this is where we take that initial seedling of an idea, which is, well, were we just reading fiction from inside this world when we were reading Jay Garrick comics? We take that idea and we build the foundations of the DC multiverse, which is A, that universes exist at different vibrational frequencies. That's piece number one. Piece number two, that the real events of different worlds manifest as their f the fictions on other worlds. So on Earth 2, the real adventures of Jay Garrick sort of get like subconsciously through the cosmos of... Uh, they resonate to like people who are like creatively attuned, like writers and stuff yes. like that, who end up accidentally sort of writing down those adventures. There's a later sort of addition to that, which is sometimes it works the other way too, that the creatives of one world or whatever can influence the, like the fiction of one world influences the real events of another. That is particularly true when DC actually makes our world part of the multiverse. Jesus. It starts having an actual metafictional impact on on things. So, but you, we're going back to the fifties, to the sixties, and from the earliest days, the multiverse was part of DC, and its relationship to fiction was also part of it. It's not something that came along in the nineties where they were like, "And what if we made the parallel Earths?" Like, that's what the comics are, is a window into it. It's like, no, that's like in the fucking 50s we were doing that. Well, yeah, even in like the 60s, there was uh, Barry Allen, like on the cover of one of the issues says like, uh, 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 quick read this comic and save my life or whatever. Yeah, I know the one you're talking about. Totally. And and I, I will say, you know, th there are layers to metafiction, you know, like you could open a bunch of old Superman comics and find a panel of him staring straight out and going, and that's why you buy war bonds or like whatever sure, the yeah, fuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do I consider that fourth wall breaking? Mm. Eh, no, I wouldn't. Not yeah. really. You know what I mean? But referencing that you were, that it is a comic and you are a character in that comic, I think. You know, there's a context to these things, but I, I do think that's interesting. Now, as for the question, are there other self-referential things? I mean, 
almost certainly yes. Sometimes they're more subtle and less metafictional. Like we've talked about how um, I think it's Marv Wolfman sort of like self inserted a character into the New Teen Titans. Yeah, uh, the character that marries uh, Donna Troy, Terry, whatever the fuck his name is. Um, but that wasn't like. It's me, Marv Wolfman, your creator. Sure. Like, it was, the, the, like Morrison does. No, yeah, no, no. Yeah. Morrison's like a little bit more of a sledgehammer that way. Yeah. But, um, but no, I mean there there are other instances of like finding a writer or talking to whomever or like you know, oh, there's like whatever. Like the, that shit like exists in those comics, but but it really explodes in the eighties with people like Morrison and, and, and certainly between animal man and doom patrol, the, the walls start thinning between reality and, well, actually I shouldn't say that because prime earth existed back in the sixties too. Sorry. Earth prime. I should say. Sure. Prime earth is earth zero. It's the main continuity of DC earth. Prime is the other name for what is now known as earth 33 which is more or less the real world. Yeah. And there are characters that originated on Earth Prime. Superboy Prime comes from what was supposed to be our world. Um, there was a character called Ultra with two A's at the end that mm-hmm. was around in the 50s and 60s that got retconned later after Crisis to be from the planet Almarac. But, but pre-Crisis, when there was a multiverse, Ultra was also from Earth Prime. But like land, like crash landed on Earth and then realized we weren't ready for superheroes and left our dimension to go to Earth One, which at that point was main DC continuity. It's crazy that so much in the 60s, it was really like self-referential about comic books and the characters in them and like in those books. Like, yeah, well, you know, and and. and Superboy Prime's an interesting one, too, when you get to it, because he's like a kid who's clearly Clark Kent, but in our world with no powers, yeah, but reads yeah. about Superman and then sees a meteor and gets his power. Like, like a lot of weird shit. Because well, like the JLA, yeah. JSA shit, like... Yeah, so, you know, like that's Earth 1, Earth 2. It's multiverse shit, but... But also, like, they read... They talk about comic books in those. Yeah, so, so again, you know, a foundational part of DC's multiverse is that fictions and specifically comic books are the windows into the realities of other universes. Yeah, yeah. But like that was there from 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 the 60s. Like, from the get-go. From like, the first time DC did the multiverse, that's part of it. Like that's fucking crazy. Like it, 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 in one uh, and the Flash is notorious also because of how much like universe hopping and stuff he did. The Flash is pretty central. The first again, Flash of Two Worlds, there's no multiverse before that. Yeah. The Flash is the first one to but do the it. Flash also the like Flash is instrumental in Crisis. The Flash, obviously, and in subsequent crises. But also, like I think the Flash like meets an editor of comics and talks about DC Comics in. I think Wally the 60s. did that. Oh, did Barry do that? Yeah, in like sixty eight. Oh, maybe. Yeah, he might have met. Oh no, you're right. He meets um, because he pops into Earth Prime. I think, yeah. or something. And so yeah, he has yeah, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he has to meet, I think it's Julius Schwartz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who helps him build a cosmic treadmill to get back to Earth One. But they, like, they, they, so yeah. that is also a, th- yeah, you're right. That is Julius also Julius Schwartz, a thing. like, talks, yeah, it talks about DC Comics, works at DC Comics. Like, fucking yeah. crazy. Yeah. Crazy that that existed. It, it is funny because it does feel like a more modern idea. Extremely. But that's also why, you know, like, yeah, without sounding gatekeepy about it, it's like the multiverse is really DC's, yeah, like thing. Like a multiverse is like f- a fun bonus for a lot of other people. Here's a world where the Ninja Turtles did this. Here's a world where the Transformers did blah blah blah. Sure. But like DC is like, no, like we like use this yeah, once yeah. a year. The fucking JLA and JSA would team up. Yeah. Sometimes they'd fight the crime syndicate. You go to Earth three. Sometimes yeah. other like. Other Earths, the Zoo Crew, Earth Sea, 
uh, that was Earth C, and then the Zoo Crew had a subworld, Earth C minus. So Rodney Rabbit, Captain Carrot, in his civilian job, is a cartoonist, and what he draws is the just a lot of animals, JLA. <laughs> and Earth C minus is an animal cartoon world, but instead of being just random animal superheroes like Captain Carrot and Pig Iron and stuff like that, they are analogs of the Justice League, but animals. So funny. You That's know, like. So funny so there's all sorts of kind of like weird layers to it that have just, they're always, they've always been there for DC or, or largely always, you know, totally. Uh, all right. Next question from Nick, uh, Dureicher, who asks, can you talk about ambush bug? Does he have a connection to earth 33? Does he perceive time as issues instead of hours, days and months? Speaking of fucking fourth wall, that was like one of the first questions we've ever talked about on this podcast. Issue number two, our second yeah, yeah. episode ever, which I, I ironically would not recommend listening to. God, no. <laughs> Richard says some fucked up well, shit. All right, look. I was um, in character. Yeah. And that character is my own opinion. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I had to change my name after. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I kind of did. Uh, well, um, so Ambush Bug. Uh, is one of very few characters who is explicitly, canonically, cosmically aware. Yeah. Knows he's in a comic book. Um, so Erwin Schwab uh, uh, basically inherits this like, irradiated spacesuit uh, that has an origin similar to Superman's, except it's just a costume that gets saved from a dying planet. <laughs> it gets irradiated on its way to Earth. Um, well, it irradiates the suit, but it also irradiates uh, a, a sock that becomes <laughs> Ambush Bug's arch enemy, Arg Isle. Uh, it was A R G H apostrophe or it's uh, just a uh, sock? exclamation. Yeah, but he's a sock with a Doctor Doom mask. Do you think he could just like use the sock? That's fucked up, man. <laughs> Jesus, good lord! <laughs> I'm gonna ambush this. Oh, good lord. More like ambush rag. No, anyway, <laughs> uh, so ambush bug puts on the suit. Some of his powers include he, he could teleport and stuff like that. But he's aware that he's fictitious. He knows he's in a comic book. Yeah, he'll look out and be like, "Did you see that when that happened in issue 13? Sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he does shit like that. I mean, as far as does he perceive time that way? Maybe not. Where to the point where they go like seconds mean nothing to him. Talk to him in panels, like sure, yeah, not yeah, like yeah, yeah. that. But he will say things like, "Oh, thank God you're back." Last issue, remember the thing, blah blah blah. Well, we've been like, there is a sense that time moves different for him. Sure, he's waiting for you to read yeah, him, yeah, yeah, yeah. or like there are things like that that sort of imply a different relationship to time and stuff like that. Um. Yeah, I mean, Ambush Bug, interestingly, like a lot of characters from around that era, kind of 80s and the yeah. 90s, started as a weird villain and then became a sort of like meta goofy, like not unlike Deadpool. Sure. It's like Deadpool just started as a villain, kind of anti-hero sort of sure. thing. And then morphed into this more meta human like a meta uh, meta comedic meta picture, yeah. silly yeah, kind yeah, of thing yeah, yeah. ambush bug started as a superman villain and then wow. morphed into this kind of like was, was he always like he was always weird but not fourth wall breaky but not fourth wall breaky but that, that followed not i mean not too far like i think he's like you could probably count on two hands that maybe even one hand the number of issues in which ambush bug is actually a villain sure yeah. But um but yeah, I mean fundamentally he actually doesn't have that many powers. It's teleportation and I would argue the cosmic awareness. Fair. Uh all right, next question uh comes from Dem Jenkies who asks, "What do you think the wildest fourth wall break has been? What event had you going I can't believe they did this?" I've got to imagine that animal man one at the time would have been a real a real shocker yeah you know like it's a sort of iconic panel you know where so this is in the the morrison run of animal man in the 80s or 90s or whatever 
it's that panel you've probably seen it where he like tur- like Animal Man turns and faces out of the panel and just yells, "I can see you!" Crazy, which is like pretty cool. Yeah, you know, like for a comic and, and something like that. Like I got to imagine that moment would have felt pretty big, um, and especially because of after that he sort of gets. He ends up out of the panels. Like, he even gets, like, trapped in, like, the gutter and, like, the white space between things and stuff. He ends up meeting Morrison um, or, quote, the writer. I mean, the weirdest thing about that whole thing is that then the writer, really Morrison, ends up reentering the DC universe. Yes. The writer ends up on the fucking Suicide Squad. Really? Yeah. What? And, like, writing the reality in that, and, and, like, gets fucking killed, too, which is its own kind of weird, funny thing. But, um, yeah, I mean, that one's got to be up there. Uh, let's see. Biggest, biggest meta. Mo- I, I'll mention one that's relatively recent, but I like it just from in terms of the art form of comics, which is there's a an issue of Flash from last year or possibly even two years ago where um, Wally teams up with Dr. Fate on a bit of an adventure. And at one point they have to escape into the second dimension. So they go down a dimensional plane. Oh, and while they're there, they do this thing where they kind of like, they say like, turn the comic and you turn it and turn the page. And then they're like falling. Oh, that's fine. And then they're like, turn it back. And they kind of like, Ugh. Like oh, that's through, like fun. they actually like play with how you read the comic, make you part of the adventure oh, kind of cool. thing, and that shit's really fun. And i i like th- I like that a lot. Um, that that was a neat one. I mean, the, the obvious ones are ones that are like nakedly meta, like Ultra Comics or something like that, which plays a lot with like flip here, do the yeah, like yeah. you know by you reading this, you empower the Ultra Gem or yeah. like all this kind of shit. Those are sort of like nakedly meta, but like that Flash one, I think was fun. A fun use of like, yeah, there's dimensions. And sh- I mean, there's a, a more recent one even than that is Batman Superman World's Finest. Right now, or I'm, I'm always a little bit behind, but right now is in a arc with Mixius Pitlick and Batmite up against this other like villainous imp. And Superman and Batman and Batmite get trapped in the fifth or sixth dimension and then they overshoot all the way down to the first dimension just like a point Mm -hmm. and then you watch them like bound into the second dimension like flat and then through the panel in back into the third dimension like they play with like wow flat versus like being like shaded and stuff and them bursting out of panels and like oh wow it's pretty cool. It's fun. I love that. I shit. like that kind of shit where you're like playing with the art form a little bit. Yeah. And those are some examples. I mean, they're by f- they're far from the only ones, but those are ones that feel like those are ones that feel like they get a reaction out of me. Like, ju- I think just being meta isn't like <gasps> you know what I mean. Like, if I pick up Doom Patrol and then someone is like, "We're here to terraform your reality," I go like, "Yeah, of course you are." You know what I mean? Like, but if I'm reading the flash and then he's like, turn the page and turn, you know, help us, you know, then you do it and you see like, then you're, you're in the story that I'm like, whoa, that's a cool, that actually gets a reaction out of me, you know? So I think that's where those two uh, are the most recent versions. And that animal man one, I imagine if you read it when it was coming out, you would feel that way too. That's my feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, time for the next question, which means we're leaving Instagram. It's funny that uh, that I was just thinking. It was funny that all of the things that you have to say when we go to different platforms are things that I made up initially, and now you're the one who has to say them. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't even. I was like, I don't even remember when. That, it, it's it's been so much longer that you've had to be the one to do them. But it is funny that it started by a stupid thing I made up, and now you have to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the joke's on you because the ultimate stupid thing that got made up was the podcast, and I did that to you. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, joke's on me. Yeah, so, you know, in their egg on your face. Man, fuck. As well as. Easy. Time to 
Go over to Reddit. Where everyone's nice. No one's ever mean. Uh, first question comes from... Oh, Art Pet the Hero. I mean, how dare you? Who asks, is Genro the Genie a djinn or a fourth dimensional imp? Oh. It's a fifth dimensional imp, actually. Well, there you go, baby. Uh, no, that's true. The imps are from the fifth dimension, which in DC is the realm of... Um, the realm of imagination. So, well, good thing that <laughs> this is as good a time as any. To say, I'm from the fifth. Yeah, dimension. I mean, God, I mean, there we go. We finally got the lore. I'm Mister Imagine. Holy shit, you are the fourth dimension. Yeah. And if you make me say my name backwards, my brain hurts. <laughs> Only just because you can't. Uh, hang on. No, 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 tam. Igenemy. No. Ah! <laughs> Noi? Imagination. Oh, I was sorry, I was thinking your real name. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you're way off. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like, like, fucking what? <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like it's fucking it's like Nirav or something. What the fuck's wrong with you? So here's the thing with the imps and that, like uh, genies are also from the fifth dimension. So, so, for example, um, the Thunderbolt, uh, like Johnny Thunder. Yeah. Um, the That's, uh, I think his name is... Is that Ye related to Johnny Storm? <laughs> Listen. Uh, his name is Yiz. Let's just oh. let that go. Um. Let's, let's just let that Yiz go. Yiz in my yeah. pants. Can you click your pen a couple of times and Yiz everywhere for us? <laughs> um. He's also from the fifth dimension. Sure. Um, uh, so the genie that we're talking about is... I I don't think I've ever read a story with this genie. Its name means relatively little to me. Um, I know that it's from a Wonder Woman thing, but it's also from the era of Wonder Woman that I think is like... I think it's the Kaniger era. Oh. It's uh, like slightly a write-off thing. I would hazard a guess that the genie is also from the fifth dimension. And I'm going to, I'll invoke the, the Johnny Thunder logic here and say if genies in general, like gin and stuff like that, exist, maybe they're all from there. Maybe they're all a man. Oh, my gin totally is. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess I'm going to say fifth dimension. Yeah, but not the fourth dimension. Oh, God. Yeah, get your shit straight. Get it together, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're a podcast. Have some fucking tact. Have some respect. Uh, next question comes from Galaxy Eyes Ruler, who asks, speaking of Johnny's, who is Johnny DC? So, Johnny DC, continuity cop. Yeah, before you all get out there and fucking start being continuity cops. Johnny DC is continuity cop. Um, actually, here, I, I think it's important that you see what Johnny DC looks like. I, th I thought you were grabbing the princess, and I was like, damn. Here, Johnny DC is in this book. This is uh, Harley screws up the DCU. Love a this. Very, a very meta uh, uh, comic here. Uh, I'm going to find Johnny DC, but yeah, continuity. What are you fucking Johnny DC? So here's, over the, here? here's the craziest thing about Johnny DC is it, it um, technically has a human form, but Johnny DC is like a sort of a meta character that's essentially like DC editorial. Love that. And their body is the like the DC logo. They're like a they're like a flat Stanley kind of character, but their body is the DC logo. I love that. Um, oh, hang on. Where are you? That's. I also love that it's Johnny DC because it's like, what are you fucking Johnny DC? What does that mean? You're that's saying like that a like thing, that's like, a thing I should That's know. like a phrase. Like, it's like, what are you fucking Johnny, like, comic books over here? Is that a thing? Yeah. It's like what you like when you when someone's trying to be an expert at something or like being an up their own ass about it. Oh, I see. Johnny DC has shown up in comics before uh, in a few instances has shown up um has shown up in like Harley stuff because Harley has started breaking the fourth wall more and more. Yeah, I, I feel like of a character to do that kind of thing is she make would make sense to me. I, th I think so, and certainly on just like the and the TV show does a great job, and certainly with that. just on the front of like a kind of Deadpool y analog. Um, 
uh, Harley's done it. Um, uh, ambush bug, like Johnny DC has gone after ambush bug, but basically like they're there to try to correct continuity errors. Sometimes Johnny DC shows up and goes like, I was just trying to untangle Donna Troy's fucking backstory or whatever. It would be really funny if they did a little thing in like the corner of the page that was like, sorry, it looks like you're trying to wreck continuity. I mean, they're almost like Clippy. That like... There's a thing, I think at one point... It looks Har- like you're trying to ruin co- uh, continuity. At one point, Harley needs to summon Johnny DC to like help save the day and just yells, Legion flight rigs are made of aluminum. That's, and it causes a continuity error and Johnny DC shows up and goes, they absolutely are not! That's so funny. Like has to retcon. She's like, we need a line-wide retcon! And like that's, does shit like fuck, that. I love that. Um, fuck, I gotta find it here. I love just that give me a sec, fam for a sec. Okay, I... Uh, I mean, speaking of fourth wall breaks, so we're pre- preparing right now for uh, if you're if you're not subscribed to the Patreon, Ekus is we're fresh on Ekus right now, and uh, I have already now pre-ordered a bunch of uh, uh, different things that we'll be doing for that. So all of the uh, the products for the uh, mystery snack challenge, I, I made those orders the other day. Uh, though uh, the doctor has to make some orders himself. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, I that's do- Johnny DC. I don't like the face. I don't like that it's a Hey Arnold on top of the DC logo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's like a sort of flat Stanley character that shows up and goes like, "We're gonna have to wreck on this." And like, like has to untangle. Is Johnny, continuity. a lady. It is now. Oh, okay. Johnny DC used to be like Johnny J O H N N Y, and it's now J O N N I DC. Uh, but yeah, both are sort of like stand-ins for editorial. They both have human I mean, forms and they exist in that. the universe. But they they show up every once in a while to be like, "You can't do this in issue 15. Blah, blah, blah. Like, <laughs> I love that. They don't get used super often, but they are sort of fun that way. It kind of like yeah, Ambush Bug has fought Johnny DC because Ambush Bug fucks things up. Harley has had encounters with Johnny DC. I love that. Johnny DC is like the help thing that pops up when you play like Lego oh, really? DC super villains. Oh, I love Johnny DC that. will pop up. Oh, that's so as fun. A thing. Yeah, so there's like yeah, but they've been around since I'm going to go out on a limb here and say maybe even pre-crisis. Whoa. Yeah. Fucking love that. Certainly in the New Earth era there was a Johnny DC, but Okay, next question from Rick to the E, who asks, are we supposed to believe that characters who break the fourth wall know they're in a comic book? And if so, do they ever try to tell other characters and totally blow their mind? Um, so, first of all, y- yes, they know they're in a comic book, but I do think it's important to reiterate that out of other than a couple of maybe specific instances, it doesn't mean they they think they only exist in a comic book. The sure. real important thing in DC is that every world is a comic book on a different world. Uh, I see. Earth 23 is a comic book on Earth 37. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, blah, blah, blah. The only world that really that no other earth has a comic book of is ours, which is earth 33 slash earth prime. Sure. Okay. Not to be confused with prime earth, Uh, which is earth zero, the main continuity. As long as we're not being confusing, but earth 33, the real world, the only comic from our world that they interact with is ultra comics. Technically the only superhero from our world. Okay. The only superhero we could make to interact with the multiverse is a comic book, is the logic of that. Fuck. So Ultra Comics is a living comic book. Um, and when you read Ultra Comics... Oh, I remember. It kind of tracks. Like, it's a little heady and confusing, but Oh, like, is that Trey? Is that right? Issue 8, if anyone uh, wants to go back and check that yeah, out. Yeah, you know, a great time to bring me into that. You're fine. Go back. Fucking Just Colin. Go back. Fucking Colin got it. Don't go back. Um, oh my God, I, I said the name. Spin around. Uh, yeah. Throw salt. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. No. Uh, so when the, so when someone realizes they're in a comic book, like 
Ambush Bug has that realization. I think Joker had that realization at mm, one point. Of course. And both of them like kind of had a sort of nihilist thing about it. But ultimately, the thing to remember is that it doesn't mean they're not real. It's like how we're in a simulation. We're all in a Yeah, exactly. You know, like it's it's definitely a mind trip. But I think largely what happens with those things is like if you've watched the Deadpool movies, people react that way. When Ambush Bug says like that happened back in issue 15, no one like the whole room doesn't like stop and go like, wait, are we in a fucking comic book? Yeah, yeah. They don't do that. What they do is they go like this fucking weirdo. Yeah. He'll go like that happened in issue 15. You go like, all right, man. Uh, sure. Sure. That's usually what happens. People sort of write it off. But um, but I, I mean, I think in Joker's super sanity era, realized he was in a comic book. Yeah. It's like if someone said that in, I think, our world, they would just be like, all right. Sure, man. I mean, honestly, I don't know if I believe the simulation thing, but if I was going to believe any kind of weird metaphysical thing, I think I would just believe in the DC continuity. Sure. I'd be like, yeah. We're in a multiverse. We obviously have a metafictional impact on parallel Earths. I mean, at the end of the day, unless things change the way that you live your life, it doesn't kind of matter. Because like no. the, the, all of the alien stuff that came out in the last few years, people are like, all right, well, then I what? mean, it wasn't even aliens. But like, uh, or the fact that, yeah, like there was, I've read specific articles that are like, science and mathematics proves that we're more than likely probably in a simulation. And it's like, okay, but, but does it change anything? I don't uh, really. I've all I've long held that like if the reverse thing were true, where it's like we could plug you into the simulation, you'll live out a perfect life. Oh yeah, you're, you're like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I would I'd be Joe Pantoliano. I mean, in an instant, fucking heartbeat. In an instant, I would sell out everyone I've ever met if I got to eat that fucking steak. I knew it was gonna come down to the steak. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, next question. From oh, who do I identify with in the Matrix? The guy who eats the steak. The traitor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Joey, I call him the steak guy. Yeah, yeah Joey Pants. Uh, Mr. Lu steak. <laughs> if you're nasty. Yeah. Luzar asks, do you like Harley being able to break the fourth wall? I prefer not being able to. Well, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I like let's it. talk about it. I like it. I think it's a good concept. I think I like it from the show. I think I uh, uh, I haven't really seen much from the comic books, but I, I think that if there's a character that could other do uh, that could do that, yeah, uh, Harley it makes sense. Harley tonally lines up really well with doing that. Totally. And I think people's main the people that don't like it, I think their main thing is like but she's like just like a regular person in this world doesn't have powers but I think that's what makes her being able to and it's not even like it's not even like every crazy person yeah, yeah, yeah. figures it out but i it, i think I, very smart and crazy makes I just, sense i just i don't think it matters and i also think at the point where we're being that meta and someone's breaking the fourth wall. You have to inter You have to take into account both sides of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's the one side of like, does this character is now looking out of the comic or understanding they're in a comic? They're like, how did they get that ability? And you go like, well, it goes from both ways. Like Harley is essentially like the fourth most popular character in DC. So it's like she's imbued now with all this and and because of her manic thing and because we want her to be fun and stuff like that. having her like turn out and wink is like natural. So you can just if you just buy into the DC cosmology that we are a part of. Yeah. Then you go like that's our influence on her. You can I mean, that's a it's a write off in a lot of ways, but it's also like it's sort of built that way. Yeah. Where it's like, no, like. All of these worlds have impacts on each other, and ours even more so has this sort of metaphysical impact on the worlds of the multiverse. She's a reading, tulpa. reading her comics affects her. Yeah, and so yeah, a tulpa. Yeah, exactly. You know, and so I think if you're like, if you like comics and you're you just want to just buy in. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, does it make sense specifically that she understands? that about herself like maybe not but also like was it fun to read who gives a shit yeah. you know like yeah i i don't know i mean i'm also just kind of getting older i just don't have time for shit anymore i but mean like if it didn't work i would not like it but i think it works and totally. so i just just go with it you know what i mean like okay i agree with that 
Uh, all right, let's leave Reddit and head on over to the doc score. <gasps> Fuck. Um, <laughs> I think on. this is the one thing that was your thing. Hang the fuck on. Which is on. funny because it's a thing you're if never you ready for. If you fucking interrupt but my it was process, your idea. I was ready to sing. I had a song Were you? Ready. Oh, okay. I could tell that by the, oh, uh, fuck. I had an absolute song yeah. ready. Okay. Um, uh, do another one. Do another one from that same artist. It's not going to be the same. <laughs> But uh, yeah, sure. But if that's what you want, I'll I do. do. I'll do a different one by okay. the same artist that I was going to do. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> d- 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 Dark Squad and the Jets. <laughs> Dark Squad. Dark Squad. Dark Squad and the Jets. I was really looking forward to Tiny Dark Squad. <laughs> that's probably what I was going to do. You <laughs> Blue Jean me- Dark Squad. <laughs> <laughs> Homey dog school, tiny dog school. <laughs> First question comes from Cosmic DM Crunchy. Ooh. That was a crunch sound. <laughs> this uh, sounds like a fucking. Article. I don't have my customary six pound bag of granola. So. <laughs> I was going to say it sounds like post Argyle. <laughs> so I had, yeah, so I had to. <laughs> Jesus. Good lord. Uh,. Is uh, if DC characters could see you while you were reading the comics, which would be most disappointed? In you? <laughs> yeah, I know where you're going with this, but I a I I don't jerk off to comic books. I don't know if that's what he was suggesting. I know where you're going with this. <laughs> um, <laughs> a I don't do that, and B. Well, I I'm was not going sure, to do that. I'm not sure there's a B, but yeah, still. Yeah, B, this is what it would look like. Yeah, it would look like this. Oh, no. <laughs> um, really argyled that comic. Yeah, I would never. To a comic book? I mean, yeah. Yeah, you don't even like the way that I hold comics. No, because you hold them like a fucking four-year-old. <laughs> um, Yeah, what, what, co- what comic book character would be the most disappointed in you if they could look out and see you reading comics? Uh, probably Superman because I was looking at all these travesties not doing anything about it. <laughs> you imagine halfway through a comic, he's just like, and you could have stopped it. Yeah. <laughs> you had all the clues. You could have saved them. Just put the book down. Yeah, yeah. None of this would happen. Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, Jesus. I'll turn the page. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, who would be most disappointed? I mean, I think probably like... Detective Chimp or Elongated Man or whatever, they'd be like, I'd be on the, the last page and I'd be like, oh, sure. And they'd be like, come on, man. It was, this is, there's so much. Look, yeah. Read the, I know that there was like a narrative caption and then there was also like a poem that was going through the whole book and dialogue, but like, don't skim. I see you skimming. Read the fucking thing. These, this is also like one of those people put time into this. This is one of those six page like toddler books too. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's everything. Every yeah. page is hardcover. The elongated man is yeah. on his <laughs> way to the police. Oh, <gasps> <Yeah>. whoa! <laughs> Holy shit! This goes all the way to the top. <laughs> Get to the end of a six page board book. You're like, Holy fuck! I bet the mayor's in on it. Which kind of? Mayor? I kind of want to. I kind of want to write like a weirdly, one of those? a weirdly serious. That's series of board books. That's so, so there's funny. still simple sentences yeah, 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 and yeah. words, but it's like, but it's like heat. It's That's... like heat in six pages. That sounds so fucking funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Detective Peace Blossom went out on a walk one day. He heard screams coming from the park. <laughs> what was the mayor doing there? Not with his wife. The... What was? <laughs> The next page is just is just an, ah. en- an envelope with photos of the president arrived at his door. <laughs> like, Can you pull out the photo? <laughs> <laughs> he got a call from a man with a distorted voice. <laughs> like just do like a board book of like a full cons- a full like political conspiracy. Yeah. What was the lesson? <laughs> we do not negotiate with terrorists. Yeah. yeah. And and so they believe it was a magic bullet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the president is in Dallas. <laughs> Who look at the president in his motorcade? Who, you know, like a bolded word yeah. to teach you, like a word. Who is Brat? You are Brat. Yeah. They are Brat. 
Lee is on the grassy knoll. <laughs> <laughs> Say no, Lee, no. I mean, that's incredible. <laughs> that's very funny. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty good. <laughs> They stopped the recount in Florida. Gore should have won. It's <laughs> <laughs> just a bunch of like weirdly serious board books. I fucking love that. Bro. Uh, all right. Next question from Hang me. on just a sec. It's in here. My wife's looking for her phone. Oh. I can hear it beeping. She's like activating it from her watch, but she keeps leaving the room where the beeping is. A little, little fourth wall break for you. That's fucking good. Drago, the Black Rose asks... If Superboy Prime could find his way into the real world, where do you think he would get his tacos? Oh, interesting. Chipotle, Taco Bell, Del Taco, or somewhere else. So, first things first. Superboy Prime, A, doesn't have to find his way to the real world. He essentially comes from the real world. Yeah. Um, or a world very, very much like it, but more or Wink. less, more or less the real world. But also, should say, he got returned to the real world during Death Metal. He, like, got his big redemption arc and, like, got returned to Earth Prime. Um, as for his favorite tacos, um, is there, like, a... Is he like I've a never had Del Taco. I can't really weigh in. Neither on have I. Uh, is he, like, a taco eater? No, but I'm going to... You know what I, I mean? <laughs> here's what I'm going to say. I think Chipotle... Does Chipotle do hard shell tacos, or is that just a Taco Bell thing? Because my feeling is you should give him a Taco Bell hard taco so that he can uh, he can bread con punch it. What? Oh, bread. Like, like the, bread con? Like, he can oh. shatter the... Walls of taco reality. <laughs> you're welcome. This was a fucking good joke. <laughs> and the fact that you're not cracking up right now. Yeah, that must be because I'm wrong. That's fucked of you to be like oh, this. Okay. It's a, that's a me problem. It's absolutely. I can't. This is so fucked. <laughs> It's so fucked of you to oh be like God. this. <laughs> we're, we're having to have something so fucked. That was a fucking good joke. Um. I had Chipotle uh, uh, when we were at the con last because I left and oh, went really? to Chipotle. Yeah. I've had Chipotle in the States, but not in Canada. Yeah, I had it in Oh, Tor no. No, no. Only in the States. I, I had think. it in Toronto, and uh, it was decent. It's all right, actually. I don't they're, know if it's worse. Their guacamole worse. fucking ripped. I don't know if it's worse in the I, I haven't States. had a not-made. It was made. all right in the States, but I've it was I've never like... had like a not-made-by-me or by like actual like people from spanish-speaking countries make guacamole and it be good and sure this was fucking chipotle i good. love how you were like oh yeah there's like the people whose culture it is and then me obviously i'm great at guacamole i am. and i'm surprised if anyone else could pull it off. obviously me and the hispanics can do it but my guacamole fucking rips though yeah i know but the fucking hubris that you're even in the same category i mean I said me first. I think you should feed your guacamole to the people whose culture it is. Yeah, but I wouldn't want them to lose their kind of whole thing. Yeah, they'd be like, fuck, he did it. <laughs> He's the Eminem of guac. Yeah, with his fucking... <laughs> He's the f with his Yukon guacamole uh, 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 avocados. <laughs> And Superstore Pico. <laughs> he, fuck. The white boy did it. Yeah, he did it. He beat ours. Uh, next question from the moral compass of the docs course sure. asks, what are some instances of fourth wall breaking in theater and how can comics use that? Oh, when the, a fucking actors start in the like seat, sit in the actual audience. I, listen, God, that's been overdone so fucking much. I like any good idea. It's good in a very specific context. If TikTok and then can make fun of it as a trope, then you know it's overdone. Totally. And we, you know, we've talked about like the one man show thing. We're just like, go long. Anyway, there sure were a lot of people in my <laughs> hometown or whatever. You know, like that, the fucking family guy joke yes. or whatever. I mean, I would argue that comics do use maybe the biggest fourth wall break trope from theater. Okay. In theater, it's called an aside. You know, oh, if sure. you... Lots of plays have it. It is not restricted to the classics. But if you study Shakespeare, 
a lot of asides. You know, a, they, some dialogue finishes, a character leaves, and then a, and then the character that's left on stage, you know, well, that's more like soliloquy. But like, even if other characters are on stage, they turn out and they go like, now watch me trick him, blah, blah, blah. Like, you be in a conversation, yeah. you turn, you go, now I'm going to do this. I wonder you know, what, it's, like... just, it's built into the thing. And, and I would make the argument yeah. that that's what narrative captions are in comics. You know, like on stage, sure. It, you know, in the classics era, it was a a way to help guide the audience along with complicated plots. But even in other plays that use asides, it's a little interior look yeah. into the thoughts of a character instead of them coming out in dialogue. And that's what narrative is too. Like sometimes in a comic. Batman and Robin are on a case and Robin is there for Batman to talk shit out to like, like if when we talk about where did the idea for Robin come from a sell comics to more kids and B it was so Batman had someone to talk to, to further the plot. But in more modern versions of comics where we have narrative bubbles where it's like Batman might be interrogating someone and being like, you know, when's the shipment coming in? Sure. But then in the box, it goes, on nights like this, I can smell the blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Like, you get the interiority of those characters through that. And it's told in words and it's told linearly. It's essentially an aside because you also read it like an aside. There's beats, right? Panel to panel, you go, there's the narrative and there's the dialogue. There's the nar- like the narration. There's sure. the dialogue. Now more dialogue and here's a narration. There's like a rhythm to how you read it too, which does function essentially like a theatrical aside, I would say. Yeah. I, I, it's a, it's a real fucking Zach Morris situation. Uh, Yeah. I mean, a a great TV example of an aside or Ferris Bueller, Ferris Bueller, a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the ones I think of, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, uh, have you ever used anything like that in theater? An aside? No, well, like, uh, like something beyond that, like uh, an aside, like. Well, I mean, like, I mean, I don't really write, so I've never like in direction though. Um, like characters coming from weird parts of the, yeah, the space. I mean, yeah, I mean, physically, you can mess with the space. I mean, comics do that sometimes too. We've talked about some of the ones, but that yeah. play with whether or not they're even in the panels. Um, yeah, you can mess with space. I mean, a, a thing that I like, a thing I enjoy doing is just slightly flirting with the idea that the, that the mechanics of the theater are performing as well. Sure. Like I like a thing that really like tickles me is if like a character says something and the way a, like a lighting cue comes in is funny. Like yeah, the yeah. timing of it or like the direction of it or like something like that. Like shit like that really makes me laugh. You know, like there was, it's not, I don't think everyone picks up on it. It's definitely in some cases just a thing for me, but like there's a dream sequence. I'll use Fiddler on the Roof as an example. There's a dream sequence in Fiddler on the Roof and um Tevye is lying to his wife about this dream basically because he's got to convince her that the matchmaker uh, the that her setup for their daughter Matchmaker, isn't good, matchmaker. and they should let her marry the Make tailor. She should marry the tailor model, and so this song is on, and he's you know that he got a dream, a vision that their daughter should marry, um, the the tailor, and every time on stage, every time they said the tailor, I had him on stage, and I just had the the lights snap on on him. So he's just sort of like in this aggressive white spotlight in the middle of this dream thing. Oh, that's fun. So they'd say his name and go like, Psh! and I I get really tickled by that. I did it in Mustard yeah, yeah. for some of the magic-y stuff. But then like, I messed with that because even when the magic-y stuff wasn't happening, there were a couple of like sound effects. Sure. Like I... I like when it feels like, you know, like we talk about like the joke is in Sex in the City. The city's really a character. Like, yeah, 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 Gotham yeah. City is a lot. Yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah. I think that is a fun thing to do in theater. And certainly as a director, I like fucking with that. Yeah, I yeah. like fucking with where the line is. Like there's a, um, it should, sometimes you got to play things a little subtle, but I do like the idea that like, the space is a character sure. or an actor, actually not even a character. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's another performer. 
that you can have a relationship sure. with. And so as an audience, you start seeing like a light or a sound or a like I mean, a, thing, a thing go on. And it's not that you're distracting or like I'm not making like a door start talking as yeah, if it's yeah, a character, yeah, yeah, but like yeah, yeah. you can start playing with the space and make it perform with actors. And that is shit I find fun. And that is to a certain degree meta. I think that because you're blurring the line of like, if you're looking at a living room, you expect certain things to be true. But then if the all of a sudden, like the light's not natural, it's not coming from a lamp. Well, it's, all, it's already performing. So now just amp that up every once in a while. If like, there's the stupid Tennessee Williams version of like, I miss my dad picture lights up. Sure. Yeah. yeah That's yeah. kind of dumb, but it's also almost exactly what I'm talking about. You know, like there's something to that. that I, I think like is that. Fun. That comedian I showed you Zach Zucker. Yes. That shit. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. yeah that, yeah. that Baja men bit is exactly what I'm talking about. That is one of the funniest bits you've shown me. Maybe, yeah. maybe ever. And it's just the idea that he could just like punch his hand in the air and just go, yippee yo It's so fucking And he does it good. like 30 fucking times. Like, that is really, really and funny to me. And he does all of his stuff. Is Bo Burnham's like got that. stuff yeah, yeah, like yeah, that yeah, too, yeah. you know? Oh, totally. The, you know, like, playing with like, how do you interact with the technology of theater is fun to me. I also love it when like, uh, when someone likes phone rings or something in an audience and they're like, what's this weird technology? And it's like, see, I actually don't like that. I'm like, stay in the fucking scene. Sure. But like when, no, no, when they're like trying to be in the scene and then, re- Oh no, I know. But I hate that they come reference out. Reference it. it. Oh, sure. I, I, that I actually hate. Oh really? They, I mean, it's such a thin line. I really like if I was at a play and they're like old timey or whatever. And then someone's phone rang. If an actor just turned out and be like, Oh, is that the dinner bell? Yeah. I fucking hate that shit. Sure. Stay in the fucking scene. <laughs> However, if it's like a big disruption, I was at a production of Merchant of Venice where this guy got up. Was this the most anti-Semitic? Blah, 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 like missing the point of Merchant of Venice slightly. And like this long rant as he like left the theater. You could hear him out in the lobby and shit like that. And those actors just stopped, paused, waited. And as soon as the thing died out, Went back into the scene. So they're clearly interacting with it and acknowledging it, but like just stayed in it, went with it. That I'm like, I'm into that. I like that. Sure. But that's what per- you that's wanted them to have been like, what was that noise? No, I fucking hate that. <laughs> I fucking hate that. Like, that is the thing that breaks it. You know what I mean? Like, sure. I st- I'm still like, I'm not about like tearing it all down. Like I still like the illusion of theater, but I just think you can there's a middle step where the the lighting designer is a performer. Your technicians, your yeah, stage yeah. crew are performers, and I think you can play with that. Like it's not just how do we efficiently bring something on stage. It's like what's the in an ideal world, I would orchestrate all the movement. Sure backstage too I, there's never enough time i'll never get to do that as a fucking synodoki new york it's yeah it's it's never gonna happen but like the speed of a curtain coming in is as important as how someone says their line if the speed of the curtain is wrong it fucks the energy and it's not just a technical thing it's a performative thing and i guess the thing that i like is that each piece a set piece a prop a light a sound, a curtain, they're all performers. Sure. And the more that you can treat them that way, I think the more interesting it is. I mean, the comic equivalent of that, I guess, is that you do have these different tools. You've got art, panel layout, um, you know, uh, page orientation, uh, you know, n- narration, yeah. dialogue. You can also make those things interact with each other. You know, it's not just those things to the reader yeah. it's those things to each other too sure. and sometimes it's directly referential if it's a really meta deadpool kind of thing or harley kind of thing and sometimes it's like it's a little bit more subtle but there's like a way that the panels flow and you realize that that's a it does something to the way the words work you know like i it's a hard thing to like quantify but when you see it done you go like that's it yeah you know what i mean totally uh, you happy fucking moral compass? 
He talked that was about a good, theater. That was a good question. Next question. For once. Rubik's Cube <laughs> asks, has Batmite ever messed with people outside the Bat family? I could see him making Phantom Stranger break his stoic attitude. It feels like it'd be fun to play around with. I don't know if he's messed with Phantom Strange. <coughs> um, he had his own series, and he has messed with other characters. <coughs> the most... <coughs> The most obvious one is Superman and Superman adjacent characters because Batmite and Mixius Pitlick have a history of team ups or antagonizing or things like that, you know. Um, so the, they have a history that way. Um, they've gone on some crazy adventures, and like those adventures technically have touched all sorts of corners of the DC universe. There's one called World's Funnest that's, uh, oh, that's an adventure of the two of them and stuff like that. Uh, you know, it's going on right now in Batman Superman World's Finest where there's a bunch of other imps that are all imps of other heroes and things like that. We've got Nightmite now, too, and things Hell like yeah. that. I, I, I mean, ultimately, Batmite obviously is very anchored to Batman, but that's no, that's certainly not his only not his only um, place. Uh, I can't I'm not thinking of one right now, but. Superman, certainly. Superman adjacent characters, certainly. But yeah, Batmite has absolutely interacted like beyond that. I'm sure he's probably like, he's, well, I mean, this is a Superman character, but he's fucked with Jimmy. He must have fucked with Jimmy. I mean, yeah, how could it not? You know, like all sorts of shit like that. But yeah. Uh, last question from the Overmat, aka Chicken Maddie. Chicken Maddie. Who asks, what character would you least want to break the fourth wall? Other than Bueno Excelente, that is. Yeah, we won't talk about him. <laughs> um, yeah, is there a character that you don't want to see break the fourth wall? And let, like, let's be clear, you know, we're not talking about like narration. Like, we're talking about like true break the fourth wall. Like you, you there reading this, like that sort of. Like, you boy. Go get the largest goose in the window. Um, oh, the one from the store. Okay. What? I thought that was going somewhere else. I was doing a little British boy. I thought it was going somewhere else. What do you mean? Yeah, I, I thought you were. What? I thought you were doing like racist kung fu sounds. Because <laughs> you started with. Because you started with like. Oh, and I was like, oh, no. You know, that's my classic beginning of a uh, accent. Thing. I know. I don't love it, though. Um, is there a character you would you don't want to see break the fourth wall? You got no interest. We don't think we need it. Don't think it would work. Alexandra DeWitt. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even break out of our fridge. I mean, I was going to say, do we need to break anything more with her? <laughs> <laughs> oh no jesus uh, Lord. i don't want to see the fucking joker break before a blow yeah i i i feel the same it feels actually too i, I fucking know fucking obvious and i know it's happened but i i i actually don't like it uh, even when joker in instances where he gets like cosmic power yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. in emperor joker or something like that i think the least interesting move is to have him realize he's in a comic. It's so much more interesting if he's just a like phenomenal cosmic power. Yeah, yeah. In a I, world that is real. You I know, would rather know, somebody like... bring it up to him and be like, yeah, 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 whatever. Like that's uninteresting to me. Yeah. Yeah, I I think I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Um another one well see it's it's funny because you know if you do the thing like that flash comic I talked about, then I think all any character I'd want to see it where they, like all of a sudden someone like even Batman or someone you just, he just kind of like looks out and goes like oh fuck you know what I like, mean you the know? idea of Batman looking out and going oh fuck is hilarious I mean if <laughs> I kind of wish there was sl slight Batman is just he's seen so much now yeah 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 but I kind of wish we had that moment like you know like Cap in Endgame where they go to space and his eyes are like fuck yeah yeah that's I do kind of wish there's a moment with Batman where he's just like oh no Oh no! Yeah, <laughs> like, I just want one time to be like, "Oh fuck!" I, this, this is a lot. Yeah, you know, like you can still be Batman about it, but just like I, 
I need a minute. Yeah. Like, just kind of fucking to process. Well, shit. <laughs> Alfred, make a therapy appointment for me. <laughs> <laughs> I need, I'd come up with a way for Bruce Wayne to talk about the multiverse. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I uh, yeah. Is there another character that I never want to see that sort of thing out of? Uh, maybe, um, maybe a character like like Black Manta. Sure, there's yeah. a level of villain that's sort of like serial killery or whatever. It's like, yeah, I know they get swept up in the big events. Manta's there during death metal and shit too, when worlds are collapsing. Sure, but yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I sort of never need to know what like the treasure pirates thoughts on cosmology are, you know, like could not care. I, I don't ever need that. You know, that even being said, I, I, I don't really want it out of the Joker, but like the Joker is also like sort of cosmically important. You could DC. see a, them doing that with a character like that, which is why I don't want them. To. And totally fair, but like Manta, like that being said, you could do something terrifying with like a Victor's as, to be like, and yeah. being like, oh, like you're a victim. And it's, you're like, fuck. Oh, oh, oh my God. <laughs> you get a paper cut. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, you're like, oh my God. Oh. He's like, you're marked now. You're yeah, like, yeah. How did they plan this? Yeah, how did they, they, they fucking sharpen the yeah, pages? Like a jagged metal crusty O in yeah. one of the pages. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I think there's ones that feel right. I mean, there's other ones that like they need. Not even need, but they're just they lend themselves to a bigger awareness. Reverse Flash, sure. Yeah, I've yeah, seen yeah. the end of time and every reboot, and you know what I mean. Like you could see that it's different. Yeah. Uh, well, that was the last question. There you go, baby. Uh, I'm sure uh, uh, a theme will have become available at some point. It is available, and I know it, but you'll learn it when I want you to, because you just stopped preparing those. It's prepared. I just explained that if you would fucking listen. Oh, I was listening. I'm listening and it's deafening. Yeah. The silence. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, uh, you can reach out to us through our various social media platforms. Dr. DC Podcast. Uh, it's fucking eat gist, baby. Go to patreon.com slash Dr. DC. There's a $1, $5, $7 level. They all give you access to the Doc Scored, our amazing Discord fan community. At the highest level, you get bonus series like Cerebros and Toretto Talks and Bonding Time. But on that, right in the middle, right in the sweet spot, that $5 level, you get the double dose. Yeah. And baby, it's Eat Gist. The Eat Gist to end all Eat Gists. Five weeks long. Yeah. More money than we've ever spent. Too much the money. The Internet of Food is our domain this year. By the year. way, uh, for the mystery snack, uh, you need to purchase uh, seven snacks. Oh, good to know. Uh, uh, that, um, that You also was... only told me one rule, so you're going to have to text me the rest of the rules. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the yeah. It's it's. I had to get complex with the rules only just so that... It's a thing that would either like that would be interesting to listen to rather than sure. just like I don't I don't fucking know I don't know yeah <laughs> I don't know this tastes like uh, I don't know meat uh, what and and it's like this was balut <laughs> I don't like, know what you just said balut oh it's a Filipino dish with like oh. a like a not fully uh uh, uh like a, like an egg that's like half turned into a chicken it's fucked up it's like a really crazy thing. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want that. No. Anyway, eat gist. The, <laughs> the internet of food will be sampling celebrity brands of uh, food. We're gonna be like looking at like weird food gadgets. Oh, we need to figure out. We're gonna be doing gonna... like a mystery taste test. We we need to figure out who's gonna buy what on yeah. Thursday. Too. Yeah, we'll we'll sort it. Um, but yeah, that's happening. Uh, it's gonna be fun, baby. I, so get on the fucking Patreon and give us your goddamn money. The money that the we're challenges. going to be spending on this. Yes. Food. Yeah, yeah. I've already I've already spent it too, so you guys really need to subscribe. <laughs> yeah, fuck. Uh, I'm I'm in I'm deep in a hole right now. <laughs> yeah, you gotta bail me out, man. Uh uh but yeah, I I pursued all the challenges. Oh so great. I think that's gonna be the last episode just because nice. that needs to happen. Nice. Uh and one of them it, it says anywhere between 
August 10th and September 17th. And well, I'm we'll like, find out, yeah. Fingers crossed it shows up at least before September. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but it's just, the, it's just one thing that... Just no, that's fine. It's all good. Uh, but yeah, subscribe. It's going to be great, baby. And yeah. you, as you know, after Ecast, it doesn't even stop. Then we roll into challenge month. Oh, God, is that the next month? Yeah, baby. Oh, my God. <laughs> Fuck. It's, it's Eekest Challenge Month Doctober. <laughs> what is wrong with me? No theme November. <laughs> Obviously. And Which then, is not the same as January. And then Docmas. Yeah, it's not It's not like January. Well, no, that's Personal Confessions January. Oh, You're sorry, thinking February. of Epuary. Epuary, sorry. A month of episodes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Which isn't the same. It's not the same as no theme November. Because the theme yeah. is episodes. And here's the craziest part. is like when we get into December, it's like all the theme comes out all at once. Like we... Yeah, have it themed for a month. <laughs> it's like we've been edging. Yeah, and you're gonna get so much theme. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, before we go, there's only one other thing to talk about, which is we got a whole other podcast. Yeah, Ghostface is a supernatural rewatch. We're, We're almost done season nine of fifteen nine? seasons. We're almost done season nine. Oh, you said we're almost on season. Nine. I said done. We're almost done season nine. Open your fucking ears. What? We're we're good partners and it's going well. Yeah, it's gonna be good. <laughs> and we go through every single episode of the CW Supernatural. We talk about real world monster lore and behind the scenes stuff about the show. And like I said, the whole fucking time we're almost done season nine. Or as I like to say, we're at the end. Of- we're at the end. Well, of- we're nearing the end of the second yeah. third of 15 seasons of the show. Which couldn't be any clearer. Yeah. Uh, and if you like Kyle Clark, well, in like two weeks, he's going to be on the podcast. Baby. So subscribe to that. Yeah. Uh, uh, see you later, alligator. Uh, yep. Adios. They always fight for what is right. Live with danger and adventure. They are men of might.